Ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome to the continuing series of the um, Smart PLS uh, hands-on approach analysis for research. Um, I'm going to continue on with the video for assessing the structural model. So what I have here is already a model which I have used um, for the um, uh, uh, structural model, sorry, um, which I have already checked the measurement model. So the measurement model is pretty good. So what I want to do now is to move on to the structural model. Now you can use the uh, adopt uh, model that we have used before this, but I thought that um, in the essence of time, I thought I might as well just use a much more simpler model, and that's why I'm using this model, because this model also has a mediation inside it, so it would make more sense to uh, look at this model instead. So, you know, it would just save a lot of time later on when we do the uh, mediation and uh, uh, analysis, okay? So, so imagine I have this model, which is um, already, uh, Settle in terms of its measurement, as you can see, some of the measurement items are taken out. Uh, AVE, CR, everything's fine. Um, so what are we going to do is, this model has 250 records. Uh, I'm just going to go to calculate, and based on the theory that I'm supposed to use bootstrap, I will be using bootstrap here. Uh, I won't be changing much except that the subsamples, I'm going to just change it to 500 for the essence, uh, for the interest of time. Now, there is no stopping you in using 5000. Uh, of course, if you have a much more complicated uh, model, you might want to bootstrap it to 5000, but that's okay. Uh, it, it doesn't really, for initial assessment, one might use more smaller subsamples, yeah? But for final result preparation, you should go for large subsample like 5,000. And of course, larger samples, if you can see here, it increases the computation time. So let's just keep it to 500 so we can make things easy at this point, okay? So let's start with uh, the uh, analysis. Now, if you notice that uh, I've changed the uh, significant value here to 0 0.1 with a two tail, because if I were to divide this, into uh, two tail, then it becomes 0 0.05, right? When you cite, uh, I hope you know your statistics <laughs> at this point. So yeah, so just keep it as it is and just start your calculation. Uh, imagine if I put this to 5,000, it would have taken even longer, but oh, thank God. It does take quite a while in terms of your uh, calculation. So while that calculation is being done, uh, I want you to prepare your um, Excel sheet uh, so that you can use the Excel sheet later on to do uh, your, uh, what do you call this, uh, reporting, okay? And uh, I'm going to show it to you slowly one at a time. Ah, so everything done. So now go back. Now you notice that some of the uh, arrows here are a little bit wide and I'm going like, whoa, how did you get that arrows wide? Oh, actually it's just here. You see, if you were to use the, um, let me just make this a little bit bigger. If you were to use these highlight parts called the, uh, using relative values or absolute values, actually it doesn't make much difference. Yeah, well, it does. If you need to use relative values, it would be much better. Then you can see that the thicker lines represents more significance, okay? If you remember my uh, uh, video before this, anything more than 1.96 at a uh, 0.05 uh, two-tailed, then it is significant. So you can see all the parts are quite significant. I can also turn them off if, if it's too blinding, but who wants to turn them off, right? So yeah, this will be great. So first thing you need to do, copy this whole thing into your Microsoft Word. Reason is because if you were to run this data set again, you may not get the same results. You know why? Because when you bootstrap, your bootstrap samples may change. And well, 
not drastically, but some of the numbers do change quite often. So always remember to, once you run the first round of Bootstrap, copy the image into your Microsoft Word. Yeah? And don't be lazy about it, okay? All right. So you can say here, uh, hypothesis testing, the bootstrap. Bootstrapping uh, direct effect results. Okay, and then just go. Now, if this is a little bit too small, then you might want to change the uh, view to a portrait view. Um, sorry, page layout, you might want to change it to, oh, I don't know, uh, landscape results probably. Yeah, apply to landscape. Ugh. Hold on, let me just change this. Just go down and uh, this point forward. Yes, landscape, this point forward, and we can change it back later on if we need to. Yeah, and bring it up. Very small, no problem. Do, 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 do. There you go, and this looks much much better right now, isn't it? Good. Okay. So, once you've got this um, into your uh, results, now the next is to report. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first show you how to report the direct effects. The next following videos, I will then concentrate on the effect size and the predictive relevance. So, once they've done the bootstrapping, this will be the first thing that will come out. Okay, which is your path coefficients under the final results. In case you forget, it's here. Uh, just copy the Excel format uh, and paste it here will be good. Okay, now isn't it easy that you have just four? It'd be so easier. Uh, the other thing you might want to copy is the 95% confidence interval as well. Uh, here, right? 95% confidence. Actually, you only need this and this. So remember, if you want 5% and 5%, uh, remember the uh, calculation of bootstrap as I showed you just now. 0 0.1, sorry, 0 0.01 and, uh, sorry, 0 0.1. One, yeah, which is ten percent, and you can uh, um, split up into two parts, which is the five percent and ninety-five percent. So we need this, and we're going to just paste it here. Now, notice that the only two things that we need is this five percent and ninety-five percent. So, what can we do? We just delete all these whole columns. Oops, so let's delete it. And there you go. All right, now I have already set in the hypothesis that I need here. As you can see, yeah, we have to report the hypothesis, the relationship. The standardized beta, the standard error, the t value of statistician, f square, q square, f square, of course, is the effect size, q square is the predictive relevance, and of course, the um, uh, what do you call this? The 95% uh, confidence interval. All right, so what do we use? Original sample or sample mean? Uh, very easily, we are going to be using the sample mean. Yeah? And it will be easy for us to, oops, sorry, my bad. So use the sample mean. Where am I? Sorry. Yeah, 
here we go. Okay. Uh, no, this is not the one. Ah, there it is. Okay, so use the sample mean. Let's just copy this one first. The full hypothesis. Sample mean, standard deviation, and t-statistics are all there. So we can just copy and paste. Now the sample mean is basically the standardized beta, so we don't have to worry about it that much. Okay, notice that um, the t values, all of it is significant, above 1.96. We'll have to make a note later on. And then the 95% confidence interval for the sample mean. 5% uh, will be the lower limit, and 95% will be the upper limit. All right, excellent. And this, of course, will be H1, H2, H3, and H4, depending on what you have um, written as your hypothesis. So be sure to also do the same thing, right? Uh, so that you don't get confused. All right, I'm just going to take this one out for a while. And just adding a bit of star here. The double star indicates that it is significant at 0.01%. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to report this like this. This is what we're going to be reporting, okay, with the indication. All right. So, oh, and one more thing. You notice that all the decision is supported. Now, like I said, the t-values will be different because uh, our uh, hypothesis was different. Uh, sorry, our uh, subsample for the bootstrapping was different. So the t-values will be a little bit different, but it, as you can see, it's not that too different. Okay, it's not that too different, so don't worry too much about it. Support it, support it, support it, and support it. So, this is the first uh, direct relationship that you want to report. The next two videos, I'm going to show you how to uh, calculate the effect size and the predictive relevance. All right, thank you.